Engaging in open online courses can be a particularly confusing experience, especially when you sometimes engage with a group of learners that can number in the hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands. So I want to talk a little bit about how we engage in these information and social experiences and how we try and make sense of that through a range of personal learning habits and techniques. So I'll call this the Sense Making and Wayfinding Information Model, or SWIM for short. So we look at something that's a bit like this. So on the one hand, we have uh, the individual dimensions of learning, we have the social and network dimension, and then we have the role that technology plays in that process. So at a starting level, one of the key elements of participating in a MOOC, or a massive open online course, particularly where there's a heavy emphasis on students owning their own space or students being in charge of their own learning, is the need for individuals to create artifacts or to create spaces that they feel most comfortable in. So if you engage in a course and you find, I'd love to have a bibliography, then the easiest way to start is to create a bibliography, share it with others and invite others to join in. Or if you find there's a particular social space missing in the course, you'd say, I'd love to engage in whatever cool social tool is available these days, then as a learner, taking the initiative and having that internal locus of control and responding to that is a key activity. So the emphasis is heavily, and in fact, the entire foundation of engaging in a large online course is one where individuals create artifacts and share those artifacts. And that is something then that brings some level of social capital and social involvement. From there, one of the key activities for individuals is twofold. One relates to the structure of the course and the second relates to the content of the course. The structure of the course is related to navigation, is knowing where the different pieces and places are. It's not unusual for an open online course to have a range of technologies that can include anything from blogs to Twitter to Facebook to whatever new tools are coming up in addition to content that might exist in a learning management system or it might exist in a MOOC platform such as edX. And so learning how to navigate those spaces is one of the earliest tasks that individuals engage in. And this is really a wayfinding activity is where are the pieces and where do I need to be? And I found personally in the past if I take a course that's particularly distributed Grabbing a piece of paper and a pen and just jotting down the different elements where they are and how they're connected can be very helpful in me conceptually understanding a landscape. It's not at all unlike going to a new city and not knowing where the major landmarks are. It's confusing and baffling, but once you've actually taken some time to articulate the key landmark elements, suddenly you can see yourself in relation to other activities. So that's the course structure aspect. The other element is obviously the content, or what is the course about. And this is an important part of it where we're continually engaging in the learning experience. Typically, this is what we call learning, but that's changing in many ways because we're expecting greater participatory activity on the part of individuals in a course, meaning we're not relying only on the faculty member to provide content for us. Then we move up to one stage. Once we've figured out the navigation and the general structure of the course uh, content, then we can start looking at identity development. And in digital spaces, particularly online courses, I think identity and learning are so tightly connected that there's really no sensible reason to pull them apart. Now much of what we're doing in this experience is obviously we're interacting around information. Information that we're seeing from our peers, information that we're providing in the, force of, in the form of artifacts, or information that uh, an external instructor or a guest presenter presents to us, or something that the instructor has pulled together. And in all of these activities, technology plays a sense-making and wayfinding role. We might use uh, Google Docs to build a bibliography or to build a general uh, glossary of terms in the course. Uh, we might use uh, Evernote to try and collect some key ideas that we encounter, personal notes and so on. So ten, uh, the, the role of technology in this experience then is it enables us to make our way through a course effectively and to build our identity and to interact with information meaningfully. From there, we move up to getting more involved in the process where we start to contextualize the different information elements. If one aspect is true in one part of a course, or one idea is true in one part of a course, it may not be true if a context changes. And so recognizing how information and identity formation is contextually connected is critical. As we move along, though, once we've consumed information, we've made some sense of it, 
In many cases, we've negotiated with others. We've debated, is this a critical element or is this not a critical element? But as we go through that, we start to engage in what I think is a vital role of sense giving. We've made sense of a topic area. We understand how these pieces connect and relate, and we then start to share that with others. So if somebody posts in a discussion forum or in a blog something that doesn't quite make sense to them, then we have the opportunity to come by and basically sense give based on the activities that we're involved in. And all of this, of course, happens in a social space. Uh, not all information is necessarily socially navigated. Not all knowledge is socially constructed, but certainly in a digital participatory setting, it is more and more. And the technologies that we use for making sense of complex information has a greater and greater social component. So that's a quick introduction to the sense-making and wayfinding information model and the emphasis that it is individual, it is networked, and it involves technology and different tools that we use to facilitate that process can't be overstated. So in summary then, here are broadly the kinds of activities that learners can engage in when they're involved in uh, the sense-making and wayfinding information model. So on the one hand, there's the value of self-organization and the forming of sub-networks. If you start in a course and you find you'd like to be uh, involved in a space where you're more comfortable, then create that space and invite others to join. Another aspect is sense giving, where you are involved in creating artifacts and sharing those artifacts so that you can help others better understand how you see a topic or an area. And quite often, novices who have just learned an idea or a concept in a course are better able to communicate that to their peers than an expert who is 20 or 30 years removed from when she first mastered that concept. Uh, there's also an important aspect on both the sense-making and sense-giving through language games, and that's that process of negotiation that happens in any MOOC or in any course, where we're trying to normalize or at least trying to harmonize our understanding of particular terms. In a course on learning, for example, the idea of what is a student, what, is what does it mean to be instructed, what does it mean to be in, in a course, these are all language games that we engage in to try and make sense of it and to start sharing perspectives with each other in a more meaningful way. The uh, fourth aspect relates to knowledge domain expansion. Learning in a MOOC, learning in a complex information setting, is as much about creating and generating new knowledge as it is about duplicating what's already there. And so it's important that we're involved in this process continually of pushing the boundaries how we understand a topic area. Even someone who's new in a MOOC or new in a course contrib can contribute meaningfully. We also, through this experience, want to emphasize wayfinding cues and symbols. This is how we understand where we are in relation to where we want to be in a course. And these can be cues that we learn to understand ourselves. As I mentioned earlier, when I start a MOOC often that's distributed, an easy approach is grab a piece of paper and jot down the parts that are there, and then as the course progresses, find how it's uh, connected. And then finally, as I've mentioned several times, is that the overall social organization of a course happens through sharing. And if we're not involved in connecting with others or in sharing with others, we're missing a real opportunity to shape the thinking of others through the artifacts that we share, but also to have uh, our thinking shaped as we engage directly with others through this language process.